Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest installment of our Sticky Bleachers of Podcast. I'm Bobby here with you today. And I am Corey, and Sticky Bleachers is the sports nerd retro nostalgia comedy podcast for all of the internet. Yeah, exactly. The official. <laughs> Official, all, that's right. Oh, official. I forgot about that one. I, w- yeah. I was trying to think of how would I describe what we talk about here on Sticky Bleachers yeah. every week, and uh, I think I covered most of it there. Yeah, Sticky Bleachers, you know, anything sticks, so it's kind of whatever whatever <laughs> falls into our laps. Yeah, especially here during the sport, the American sports doldrums, Yes, where yes. there's just uh, not, not as much to follow with respect to our fans of hockey and professional basketball and auto and racing golf. and golf that's just starting golf up and yeah and pro all those things I know. everything's just getting into the swing of their uh, of their seasons of their respected seasons so that's we don't right. have all the excitement of the playoff football and and other things going on so yep but, we've got a couple of weeks before march madness and uh, you know in in march yeah. that's when you know we've got Baseball spring training games are starting to show up on TV. Yes. You've got the uh, the big NCAA tournament, of course. You, you've got Arch Madness for uh, <laughs> the <laughs> smaller conference down there in St. Louis. Uh, you also have St. Patrick's Day. And I yeah. got an interesting email, Bob, through my website. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was from a, a small-time indie film promoter. And they are promoting a straight-to-DVD slash straight-to-on-demand streaming movie starring Fred Willard and Kevin Farley. Oh, really? Yes. Chris's and brother. They, Chris's brother, yes. Uh, gotcha. Chris's brother, Kevin Farley of, of Black Sheep fame. Uh, <laughs> I guess Kevin was also in The Waterboy and Black Sheep. Uh, and there, He was it, in Black a, Sheep? I guess he was in Black Sheep. I'm not sure what I looked at his IMDb page and saw really? it on there. That was all. I was just in there. I just so. remember him from that uh, fake boy band uh, that MTV created. Do yes, remember that? together. Yeah, two, the together. number two together yeah. was it. So that was Kevin Farley. I knew that was a Farley brother. Yeah. That was Kevin Farley. Okay. Yeah, I guess I didn't. Yeah. look Is there more than one far. Farley brother? Is there I... more than one Farley brother? I don't know. That's a good question, Bob. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. I've only known of Kevin. I mean, okay. and his other brother Chris, but. Yeah. All right. Well, so they're promoting this this film, and I am I might be able to uh, see an advanced screening of it and do a review for it. So I'm not nice. a movie reviewer, but uh, it will be kind of fun. You could be. Yeah, yeah you could be. I could. Got to start somewhere. I suppose. What's the movie I don't called? Know. What's the movie um, called? The, I'm not sure if I should share it publicly. I'm not sure. It doesn't. It comes out on Ooh. March. It comes out on March 1st in North America, which is a little bit after this. So. Gotcha. We will, we so will it's see. classified. Well, I'm not sure if it's classified. There is there is press well, stuff. Well, you can't about share it. it. Yeah. Well, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> Maybe we'll <laughs> talk about it next week if I if I hear back from them. So I might be seeing some advanced things there, and I might if I do a review for it, I will definitely shamelessly plug it all over every vehicle I can. Is it on, a comedy on, or a drama? I mean, with Fred a, Willard, you can go either with way. With Fred Willard and Kevin Farley, you know it's going to be a real tearjerker. A real tear, yeah, tear jerker. <laughs> but it has to do with with Ireland and Americans in Ireland, so I think that was the the angle that they have. So um, I'm I'm going to try to get on the list of people who interview the cast. So we will see if I get a chance to um, get to chat. Go on with the circuit. Former former together singer Kevin Farley. I'm not sure if it's going to amount to anything. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything with it. Um, they just they reached out probably to lots of different press people like me and. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll see about that. I've gotten other interesting things like that through my website contacts. Uh, I had a House Hunters International scouter person oh, yeah. contact me a while ago. I decided not to go any. I decided not to look into that, uh, go any farther with that, because House Hunters people who appear on that show always look like <laughs> awful, awful, terrible people. It's so addictive, though, right? Well, That's what I, I, I hear. I, just I like, hear. I hear people love that show. Well, like reality show, any reality show like that can just you can be marathoned. You can watch it all yeah. day long. They, you know, I'm not, and I wouldn't. I don't want to criticize the people who make it or the people who watch it and watch no. it like in big marathons because they're perfect for turning on on a Saturday afternoon and watching five episodes of it and then going, well, there's the day. Yep. But <laughs> yeah, the people on <laughs> those shows today? always look so terrible. As I couldn't imagine myself being the guy that they're like, okay, so we need you, even though you don't feel this way, we need you, Corey, to 
tell the camera that you don't like this little thing and you don't like this detail and it's a deal breaker for you. Yep. So I want to see me going like, mm, guys, I don't like this. It looks completely real and not fake at all. <sighs> I know. <laughs> or staged. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so we'll, yeah, we'll see how that how that goes. I don't know. If it, if you get a chance to interview Fred Willard, ask him to come on the show. I'd be, love to pick his brain. I will. I, yeah, I'm, I don't know what his sports preferences are. It's, you know, it's been a while since I've thought well, about Fred Willard until I saw that popped up. I was like, oh, oh yeah, I know that name. That's cool. Well, of course, he was uh, the one of the comment, uh, one of the broadcasters on uh, Best in Show. So he's got dog judging at least in his background. That's true. That's true. He's all he's all over that. Uh, where else has he appeared in? Uh, I could say, I I think of him in like Anchorman. He was the like yep. the station manager at Anchorman. Yep. He's got such good things there. But yeah, all, all of those like well, Michael a lot McKean, of Cr- Christopher Harry Guest movies. movies. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So, oh, he's a great actor. He's a great bit bit actor. Yes, but. he's he's perfect in in bits. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. perfect in bits. But he's so like last... Eugene Levy. He can't carry a movie, but he can definitely add nice little sprinkles to it every once in a while. Yes, and Eugene got on that American Pie wagon though, and Ooh. has seems to have not let go. He's no. all of the whole Would Stipler you? family has uh, appeared with Eugene Levy. Yeah, long I'm... after Jason Biggs got out of town, <laughs> the Stipler clan and Eugene Levy, you can count on them being in the They'll next be back. straight to DVD. The sequel. original crew will be back in no time, I'm sure. So that's one of those ones they're gonna have to keep going back to that well to well, keep yep. funding their lifestyles. Well, they came back for American Wedding. That yep. was a, and then is there is there going to be an American reunion? Have you? Uh... I I have not kept up on it, but I'm sure okay. we'll do some investigating and get back to our listeners and see what the next American movie is going to be made. I got it. I'll just ask Fred Willard when I talk to him. There, there you go. See, look at that full circle. The, our Hollywood insider, Fred Willard. Uh, also going on That's here awesome. in Ireland, though, is the the big rugby tournament. Um, Last weekend, uh-huh. after we recorded, round two happened that uh, that next weekend in in, in Ireland. Uh, the people were not happy as Ireland actually visited France. I'm sorry, they were playing at the Stade de France in Paris, which is good mm. to see that that stadium is hosting games again after the bombing that happened uh, yeah. just outside the, the stadium. They're hosting games there again. Um, seems like things are back to normal there. But yep. Ireland visited France, who is a middle of the pack usually rugby squad. And they lost ten to nine, in a very oh. very rough game. So Ireland, the champions of the last couple Six Nations rugby tournaments, is now o one and one. Let me make sure I say that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting. After a thirteen thirteen tie, uh, and then they lost to France. They're off this weekend, and then they're going to England next weekend, and that's going to be a brutal one. But a couple of comments from the comments on the rugby match. Uh, of Ireland versus France. This one is from Eamon. That's an Irish name. E A M O N for you, Bob. So there's there's the, some gotcha. um, education for you, Eamon. I appreciate uh, I think, it. I think it might be the Irish version of Edward. I think. Really? I think that's what I think. Eamon is. Uh, I might be wrong there, but there, there's a lot of Irish versions of of older classic names like that that are Irish mm-hmm. versions of an Eamon. Normally, you can see the connection or something, but anyway. Yeah. Well, like Mihal is Michael. So yeah, that there makes you sense. go. You got it close enough. Close That's enough. That's kind of close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, about, how about these? A few more. They're all of these names are the same version. Uh, uh. Sh- Sean, Owen, Own, and oh, there's a couple more, but they're all versions of John. No way. <laughs> Sean, Sean, Own, Owen. <laughs> Jan, there's like there's all kinds I of guess... one. That's not specifically an Irish one, but yeah, there's lots of versions of of, of John. John. And That's... Owen is spelled E E O I N or E I O N. Oh really? Own. It's why you spell own. Own, not Owen. Own. Right. Well, that's where Owen is an English anglicized version of own, which is an Irishized version of John. <laughs> so it's so to get to the Owen, you need to go from. English John to Irish Owen back to English Owen. I'm my own grandpa. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. Anyway, Eamon says rugby is almost unwatchable these days. I think it's time to reduce the teams to 13 or 14 aside in order to open up some room on the pitch. It's like watching bad sumo wrestling. Now, Bob, Ooh. I have a question for you. How many players are supposed to be on a rugby team on mm. a side? On On each side. On each side. Uh, total or just on the field? 
Uh, just on the field at any given time. I don't just know how, how big the rosters time? are, but how many are supposed to be on the field at any one time? Every time I've seen a still picture of a rugby match, <laughs> there appears to be... There's always tons of guys out there. Yeah. I'm going to say... I'll say six... Well, eight on each side. Eight uh, guys. It, it is 15 on each side. 15 <sighs> on each side. Yes, Dang. that is how many players are on a rugby uh, rugby field at a given time. So Jeez. Eamon is suggesting changing the nature of the game uh, 13 or 14 down from 15, although it does get... Uh, it does get pretty messy out there sometimes on the on the rugby pitch with all those players. So yeah, I don't know. I'd imagine. I'm sure it would change the rules. There are um, for casual play. I understand. I've never played, but there are fewer uh, players variations uh, for like for club teams and things. So you don't have to get 30 people to play a game. Now, now casual rugby seems like uh, as absurd as like casual football. I mean, is there a way to play where you're not uh, destroying your body? They do have touch rugby. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if they use flags for rugby because it's a, the like the tackling is a little different. So but they, there are touch rugby leagues, although you can still – I know some people who have still gotten injured playing touch rugby, just like you can still hurt yourself yeah. playing touch touch football. But, uh, yeah, I understand with touch rugby, when you when you get touched, th- that's when you have to you're – not, you're, you're not down like an American football. The basic rules of rugby, you still have possession of it. You just have to pass the ball – backwards to one of your teammates when you get gotcha. tackled or tackled or touched then you have to to hand the ball backwards now is it always can you always toss the ball backwards can you do a forward pass in rugby you cannot do a forward pass you can kick the ball forward okay and it's a live ball so if you kick the gotcha. ball forward it's live so the other team can pick it up or okay. if you kick it strategically kick it really well your okay. team can recover a forward kick but generally the defenders are protecting that but if a defender ever gets out of position then you you as a as one player can kick it forward to one of your teammates who can recover it then and and a and a goal is is kicking it through the uprights right well you can score a something that's akin to a touchdown which is called a try so there okay. is an end zone although they oh, go okay. by different names there is an end zone so if you and your team can carry it over the goal line, and you have to. You ready for you this? You and your teammate. Well, just I mean, with your teammates. Okay. You know, just you, can't be. Can you only alone one player do it? needs to do it. Yeah, you alone okay. can do it. But I but generally, it was like a... yeah, generally you don't see a player because there's no forward passing. You generally will not see a player getting behind the defense and and running in the clear. Okay. Usually, it's almost always a a, a mess of bodies and a slow grind, gotcha. especially the once pile. you get up to the goal line. Yeah, it's a pile. Um, but you have to put the ball on the ground and apply downward force to it in that end zone to score. So it's not <laughs> like American football where you just have to cross that plane of the goal. Right. You have to cross that plane. And then on the other side of that plane, you have to put Embed t- the ball, touch the ball down, which is, I think it's kind of strange that we have a touchdown Yeah. and they don't have a touchdown because you, so if you, and it's, it's happened before where a player will get kind of like, thrown through the end zone okay you know or like or dives to the end zone but Superman. lands out of bounds or something and that's yeah. no good okay because the ball or, didn't touch down yes and you have to have control of it so like if you get the ball knocked out of your hands mm. and it hits the ground in the end zone then it's a then you can't I, I don't know if it's a live ball or if that goes back to the other team so des Bryant shouldn't play rugby anytime soon no, Des Bryant should stay way away from rugby. I don't know if he would fit in culturally with with rugby. It's a little bit different kind of sport. I'm sure um, he could ball, but would yeah, it be sure a, would ball. it be a catch? Ooh, yeah. Well, see, mm. he doesn't have to worry. He's not catching forward passes. But you also can kick uh, in in rugby because a, a try is worth five points, and then you can kick a two point conversion through the uprights. Mm. So a try can be worth seven. Interesting. I mean, that's a lot of American football rules came from rugby rules. Yeah, but you that can makes al- sense. you can also kick. A field goal, kind of, from the field of play. If you feel like you can't get to the end zone to score the try, you can you can kick through the uprights. And there, I, I can't remember it's worth two or three if you do that. Or if you get fouled, you can kick a penalty shot. If you're close enough to the uprights, you can kick through the uprights. Or if you get fouled way back in your own territory, you can just do the equivalent of a punt and just okay. kick it along to the other team. Well, look so, at this. Yeah. I know more about rugby than I've ever have, so. Yeah, I know, I know. I've watched Thanks, a couple Corey. of rugby matches. Probably not as many as as I should be, but well, there's our our it sounds rugby. interesting. 
yeah, there's our rugby wrap up though. It's probably it's more our rugby time on opener. Rugby than you than you. That's right. More time than you probably ever wanted to spend talking about Fred Willard and rugby, Bob. But let's uh, let's get hey. on into the NBA. What do you think? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Perfect segue. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, uh, well, yeah, we had uh, the NBA All Star Weekend uh, last weekend, and we made some bets on the uh, the skills challenge, the three point uh, contest, and then the slam dunk contest. All the events were really exciting. Uh, they were a little later uh, in the night on our end, so I'm sure you didn't get a chance to watch Corey. But nope. um, unfortunately, neither of our picks in the skills challenge uh, made it past the first round. I had uh, Draymond Green, and Corey, you had Jordan Clarkson, mm-hmm. and. Uh, the big men did not show up, so it was an exciting uh, final round for that, though. Isaiah Thomas and Carl Anthony Towns uh, went head-to-head, and uh, the rookie big man, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, took home the Skills Challenge title. Um, but then the three-point contest happened, and that was very, very exciting. Did you get a chance to see any of the recap of that, Corey? No, I didn't because I, the NBA isn't as good at YouTube as the NFL is. They don't have they they must not have the same deal with Google as the NFL does because gotcha. most of the NBA's YouTube coverage was ancillary. I mean, they had dozens of NBA All Star Weekend videos, yeah, but it was it was stuff not specifically related to the actual game content. It was interviews, and it was here is a shot of. Shaq sitting on the sidelines at the NBA yeah. All Star Weekend, getting some popcorn. Like okay. the NBA is better at Twitter and than uh, the NFL is, so yeah. that's their yeah. bread and butter. But Agreed. it was so an no, exciting. I'm not going to watch that or any of the highlights of that. Well, it was an exciting uh, three point contest as well. Um, my pick, JJ Redick, went out in a shootout in the first round, so there were uh, three players tied with twenty, um, and he did not advance. Uh, and your pick, Steph Curry, did advance to the finals. And uh, went first, actually, before uh, his teammate, Clay Thompson. And Steph had a great first, uh, great last round, but uh, Clay Thompson was just raining threes all day long. I think he missed, like, two or three shots and beat Steph by a couple points. So it was a very exciting uh, three-point contest, and unfortunately, neither of us won in that. But then it brought us to the uh, slam dunk contest, which everyone was kind of saying was stale and uh, getting a little old. But... uh, Saturday's performance by both uh, Adam Levine and uh, uh, Alex Gordon. Sorry, Lost sorry. Did you say? Did you say Adam Levine, lead oh, singer sorry. of uh, Maroon Five? Yes, I almost, I'm sorry. I almost said Matchbox Twenty. <laughs> I almost said Adam Levine, lead singer of Matchbox Twenty. So we almost. I'm <laughs> sorry. My apologies <laughs> to Zach. I had Adam on the brain. <laughs> I should have. I should have boned it too, so that then both of us could have done it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ah, uh, shows what we know. Anyway. <laughs> but it was an exciting uh, slam dunk contest. They win uh, three overtimes, if you will, and uh, end up having to make up dunks and stuff. And if you get a chance, go back and watch that, because that was very fun. Uh, Alex Gordon, jeez, uh, what am I doing? Uh, Gordon jumped over uh, uh, his mascot and caught the ball and like brought it behind his back. And it was just, it was an amazing thing. But it was a fun uh, skills challenge Saturday night, and... Uh, I believe I had Levine winning the slam dunk contest, so I won won our little bet, but I would have lost money in Vegas had we gone that route. But. Yes. Well, who would have known that Maroon 5 singer know. Adam Levine and Kansas City Royals star Alex right. Gordon would both be so successful in the slam dunk contest, Bob? <laughs> I have... I have a uh, baseball and Maroon Five apparently on the brain. I so. know, I guess, I guess that was a, that was a fun little pick though, uh, and I did see a little bit of the All Star Game itself highlights, but I have a hard time, I have a hard time watching videos that are non YouTube videos because I have a slower connection, and YouTube is just really nice in adjusting bandwidth use. Unlike a lot of of embedded players from official places like like NFL.com or NBA official highlights or even ESPN or Yahoo of you know non YouTube players that are not quite as um, accommodating to low bandwidth folks such as myself. <laughs> you got to get up to speed. No pun intended. Yeah, I know. No, I literally do have to get up to speed. But it, it is tough when you try to open a website, or, you know, or read an article that has an autoplay video. And mm-hmm. it just it takes forever to load what you want to get to because yeah. you've got an autoplay video, 
And I, like, I understand that those play places need to monetize their content, and I know they can make more money with their own player than they can sharing revenue with YouTube on, yeah. on the YouTube channel, which is why I'm wondering if the, the NFL must have a better deal with Google than, than does the um, – than at least the NBA, yeah, because the NFL yeah, has no probably. problem playing official in-game content and highlights yeah. on YouTube, and they actually do it nicely in like a Google search page if you look for that. But uh, yeah, the NBA, not so much. So that's why it's a little bit tougher for me. I'm I'm a little behind and a little backwards on that. To get caught up to speed with the NBA. Yeah, it's hard. But uh, so, so NBA this coming weekend, we did a well, we did an all star game highlight, which you can check out on our YouTube channel and mm-hmm. just went live on Thursday of this week was a simulation of this coming weekend's ABC game of the week. The Thunder hosting the Cavs Thunder in our simulation have a very interesting court art with the old Seattle Supersonics oh, logo, yes. but covered colored blue to uh, reflect their new their new unis. Yep. I love, I love the mismatch. I-, I thought it was awesome. So it was the old Seattle, uh, supersonics logo in, in OKC. So definitely yeah. worth checking out bunch of threes raining down. Yeah. Particularly that fourth quarter was very exciting. So if you do get a chance to watch that also on our YouTube channel, uh, do, do check that out and especially go to the end if you don't have time to watch the whole game. It is it is 20 minutes long. We try to keep those snappy and punchy if we can. I did an extended Super Bowl and an extended All-Star game. Those are both about a half hour long, but we try to keep those short. YouTube channel, as of this recording, is uh, 9% of the way to those 100 subscriber mark where we can get that custom YouTube URL. So Absolutely. do keep crushing that subscribe button if you do Donate see those and subscribe. videos. Donate yeah, well, just just give us the thumbs up and give us give us subscribe. I know it's tough. Clicks are, I mean, as someone who more or less works online, like I know how hard it is to to get clicks or to get reviews and things, and it is mm-hmm. a it is a big thing. So we do appreciate those clicks of the thumbs up and those clicks of the subscribe button. So that will help us grow the channel, get it to more people. It doesn't cost anything except nope. your your click, which I know is not worth nothing. Which used to be worth nothing, but now clicks are pretty valuable. Worth something. So. They really are something, so. right? Yeah, they are. They, you know, it, it is again. It's like it's you know, I have my website and you know other things that I that I do online, and I know that it's it's it, even giving away something for free is hard to do on the internet. Oh yeah, now oh yeah, I mean, it's, been a musician yeah, you, for a you while. You know now. that too, Bob. As a, as a musician, I <laughs> I shouldn't say talk like I'm the only one who knows what this is. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to it. Yeah, giving away your music is a very difficult thing to do. So, yeah, getting anybody to listen or click or do anything online is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very difficult, but uh, always appreciated when they do interact and everything. We like to hear from everybody. So, um, and thanks again for listening. But um, well, we had an exciting NBA All Star Weekend, and we did a simulation of the game. So, if you're on YouTube and checking that out, um, ours did not uh, have 396 total points scored, <laughs> but it was. Uh, there were 40 steals, so we might have been pretty close in that uh, that aspect, but. Um, we try to do all these Sims and get them as, uh, close to realistic as possible. So with our five minute quarters and everything, but, um, we, uh, there are no NBA games on, uh, tap for this week until, uh, Thursday night. And that means we've been left to watch, uh, college basketball and have you been watching any college basketball there, Corey? I have been, you know, watching the results of some of the games. Obviously I can't stay up too late to watch them. I've just been watching some of the some of the top teams, what's been going on. This is about the time when I finally start to broaden my attention in college basketball. After the okay. Super Bowl is usually when I, when I just go beyond my narrow view of the teams from the state of Iowa and start yep. looking at who else is uh, going to be around. Not like I have any control over it or I wouldn't, you know, call myself a bracketology nerd. No. Um, it's just nice to kind of look around so that you kind of know who you're seeing when you are watching the tournament games. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely makes it more fun when you have uh, an idea of who the teams are and stuff. And so you don't shoot yourself in the foot right away when you're making your bracket. But yep, that's um, right. But if you're paying attention to Iowa teams this year, you've you know, at least you're paying attention to teams that are doing pretty well. Yes, although not it's necessarily as of late. <laughs> yes, it's been a tough week for the the top five team. Not even not just the in men's basketball with the Iowa Hawkeyes, but just the top five teams in general this week. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's been a bit of a a tough road for anybody that's ranked in the top five. So we thought it'd be fun to uh, look at the current top five. And although last night Iowa lost to Penn State and North Carolina lost to Duke, uh, 
thought it'd be fun to kind of go through their up the top five upcoming schedules and see who's the next to get upset. So I'll start it off here. We have Villanova ranked at number one, and their next game is versus Butler, unranked Butler, on Saturday. Uh-huh. And uh, Villanova won last night over Temple. Uh, they crushed Temple, so no upset there. And then in yep. uh, number two is Kansas, and uh, last week they had a win over Oklahoma State. And uh, their next game is versus Kansas State, so in-state rival on Saturday. And then uh, Oklahoma is number three, and they lost to Kansas uh, by four in their last game. And their next game is uh, versus West Virginia, number 10 ranked West Virginia on Saturday as well. And uh, Iowa, as we mentioned earlier, lost to Penn State last night by four and uh, lost to Indiana last week as well. So... Not riding too hot is Iowa, but their next game is actually uh, Wednesday next week versus Wisconsin, and that is in Iowa. So, um, And then North Carolina lost a, a pretty good game last night to, to Duke, and uh, yep. their next contest is on Saturday versus the number 11-ranked Miami Hurricanes. So my question is, Corey, who is the next team to get upset? We'll go with that first. Okay. Your thoughts? All right. All right, so um, the obvious favorite pick, I I think, here is probably going to be West Virginia over Oklahoma. Oklahoma's been vulnerable early this year. Did they, they had a loss to Iowa State earlier this year. Did they not, I believe? Yes, um, yes they did. So, they, had, they, have, they, so they, they can be beat. West Virginia's making some noise. Obviously, the NC-Miami game would be another pick, but I think I'm going to go with Oklahoma losing to West Virginia this week. Okay, Oklahoma losing to West Virginia. All right. And although they're probably going to be knocked out of the top five in next week's uh, rankings, I'm going to have to go with Wisconsin beating Iowa. I'm going to say that's the next next upset. So Wisconsin's been playing really well, and although it's in Iowa, I think uh, the tide will turn there. So as Iowa much as it pains that they, me. that they can win in the face of – or lose, I'm sorry, in the face of all wins. Yes, so. <laughs> Exactly. So as much yes. as it pains me, I'll go with the Badgers over the Hawkeyes as the next upset. So, um, but they also, we also do have uh, another set of games. So within the week, there's uh, the teams will play another set of games. So I thought it'd be fun that if we could pick the actual game that they'd lose. So if we have Villanova, Kansas, Oklahoma, Iowa, North Carolina losing, that's one point. And then if you pick the actual game that they lose, you get an extra point. So we can... Uh, get a little separation in this race so villanova villanova's next game on uh wednesday is going to be villanova versus number eight ranked xavier so that should be a tough in conference matchup there okay and then uh uh, kansas next game is versus the 25th ranked baylor and that's on tuesday oklahoma state uh oh actually oklahoma is hosting oklahoma state on wednesday and then iowa plays ohio state on sunday a week from this Sunday. And then uh, UNC has uh, North Carolina State coming up on Wednesday. So if you're going with, what did you go with originally? You went with, uh, I went with... I went with Oklahoma. You went with Oklahoma. So Oklahoma, what game do you think well, they're they going to upset? They have, a, they have a tough week ahead. West Virginia and then Oklahoma State back-to-back. I guess this is, yeah. this is that time of year, though, when you have exciting is... matchups like this. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with West Virginia as the game that they get upset. I'm going to say Oklahoma is going to get upset this week and it's going to be West Virginia. And then they're going to redeem themselves with Oklahoma state with Oklahoma state. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with my pick too, as well. I'm going to go with Wisconsin beating Iowa. All right. And hopefully, hopefully the Hawkeyes can beat the Buckeyes in the following, following game. But, um, as we said, they'll probably be out of the top five, but uh, this is the time of the year when uh, we're getting right down to the end of it. We're getting right down to the conference uh, playoffs and everything, and should be a fun, exciting time for college basketball coming up. So everyone's getting ready for March, right? Yes, and actually I'm going to be running a, a March Madness pick em for some of our Irish friends who neither watch nor care about basketball in any way, shape, or form. So that's going to be a fun it's going to be a fun selection day when I go up there and have them fill out their brackets. We're going to be doing paper brackets, which is uh, nice. kind of a kickback these days almost. It is a little bit, but that's kind of fun. Yeah. So Pencil I will, or pen? 
uh, ooh, I'm going to make them do it in pen. I'm going to make them do it in pen. And then I'll, I'm going to be the, yeah. the, 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 the guy who sits at home with the table spread out <laughs> with everybody's bracket. Every, and then on you know, Monday morning, I'm going to have to be yeah. circling and, and Xing all the like games. Russell so Crowe in be a Beautiful fun. Mind. Yeah. Ooh, I yeah. Like it. Just get them all so, taped up around your house and stuff and have yarn yeah. connecting dots and everything. And little uh, little pictures, yeah. Little, be a, there'll be a picture yeah. of Tom Izzo looking looking angry, yeah. and I'll have a string going to Tom yeah. Izzo and a little, a little thing poke poking. And yeah. then a bunch of question marks. You got to draw a bunch of question marks all over the place because you got to remember yes. their questions. That's right. Because so. who? Yeah, who is? What's the connection between Tom Izzo and Coach K? There'll be like a like a an yeah. empty face with a question mark face. Like who's mm-hmm. the who's the the guru of those guys? Hey, speaking of Ohio State, Bob, this week uh, the ESPN television crew experimented with. A, a new camera angle at the Ohio State Michigan men's basketball game. It was kind of a, yes. uh, it was called a like a worm's eye view, or it was a, as ESPN called it the courtside view. Gotcha. Um, the the look that they, they're better. trying to simulate the look that you would get if you were sitting at a courtside seat or at the press table, because it sounds like the camera was just like sitting on the press table, yeah, <laughs> going back and forth. Uh, and I saw, I didn't see the game, but I saw lots of screen grabs of it and lots of shots of a the backside of a referee and not much else <laughs> yeah which it is what you get when you sit at the press table placement. yeah it was an unfortunate well, placement for a camera yeah and i we i got some fun fun comments on that uh from twitter bt powerhouse that's at bt powerhouse said oh i know BT better. Powerhouse. yeah that's they're a, a popular one yes things yeah. better than this espn camera angle ending the mcrib ads on youtube <laughs> Working on Saturday. Ooh, ouch, BT wow. Powerhouse. And in the comments section, Omar, Yahoo user Omar, said, there are a lot of things that are making ESPN broadcasts annoying. Not all college basketball games will finish in two hours or less. I hate it when I miss 10 minutes of the first half because the game between Roast Beef State versus Bologna <laughs> Tech is going into overtime. A hey, Bologna Tech about- has a great, great team this year. That's right. I don't care about a live look in of the St. Mickey Mouse versus Holy Donald Deck on ESPN, the Ocho. Ouch, mm-hmm. Omar. So piling on there and wow. very creatively named teams that ESPN very, was broadcasting yeah. from. But it, it was interesting that they're try- they, they, in their defense, they said they were trying to recreate the or give you, the viewer a better look at the fast action. Of, of a basketball yeah. game. But as a in high school, I sat at the press table and announced uh, high school basketball games. And I remember not really loving the angle that you get down there i prefer a bleacher seat it is it's tough to see across the court because things like players and referees get in your way so you cannot see to the far baseline as easily as you can from a television i mean that's that's the thing that makes sports on television so great is the technology to have the camera in a place where a normal human can't see right give you that perspective that you won't even get if you're at the game so yeah so i I prefer I prefer yeah. our NBA Live '96 point of view that we have from our all of our Sims and everything. So it, nice yeah, it's little... nice. It's, so it's like a, a fixed camera on a track, looking at the court at an angle, and the camera just yeah. kind of goes back and forth on the track. I, I, yeah, Maybe that's that's an ultra modern some, way. We should send some notes to ESPN. Tell them. Yeah. Oh, nice. you gotta take notes from NBA Live '96. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were working with. They had a fixed sprite background of the of the court that just w- went in it what is a diagonal shape they couldn't yeah. they couldn't have rotation scaling and rotation was no. tough to do on the sega genesis they could take a little bit from uh, the nfl too and get that camera that just goes right across half court and uh just on a on a wire and just kind of have that circulating mm. back and forth yeah there you and go. if the ball touches it you know it's just out of bounds whatever but yeah perfect. You can get, perfect yeah i saw i saw lots of other snarky comments on the, in that thread um that that just that mentioned how pointless it was also to have the blimp footage of the dome stadium or the or the yeah. indoor arena, uh, and and also and I I disagree, I agree with those. It's a little bit silly to see domed footage from uh, from the blimp, but the they didn't like the ones where it's like here's a look at in the cornfield, here's a look at a combine harvesting well. corn. Now let's go back to the football game. And as someone who's watched Iowa football yeah. for years, and that's the only thing that. The national broadcasters ever seem to want to show is the uh, is the combine the corn. harvesting corn. Yep. Well, you got to reaffirm those stereotypes all over the place. So we That's all right. farm corn here in Iowa. That's right. My crop the is getting ready to grow. Narrative so. needs to continue. That's right. So people yep. watching in other parts of the country go, ah, oh, yep, it's Iowa time. There's the there's the the combine. Yep. yep. Got it. Absolutely. 
Although I, I did uh, read an article this week that com- uh, that said that Dubuque was the San Francisco of the Midwest, which I didn't agree with, but it was in nice what, to hear. In what <laughs> way were they saying Dubuque I know, was right? San Francisco of the Midwest? I, I, I think it mainly it has, has to do with we have we have hills. We have hills that uh, streets hills. are on as well. Yes. Okay. So, All right. Steep All right. streets. Steep streets. Outside right. of that, I have no idea. We have no hippie population. Uh, yeah. No pop culture references or anything, but. I guess Stallone made a movie here in the 80s. He did. F-I-S-T. Yeah. Fist. Fist. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, but then, yeah, but outside Kevin, of that, Kevin I don't Costner know how made, a, made another Midwest. famous film in Dubuque also. What was called that? Field, called Field of Dreams. Oh, yes. Yeah, there was Shot that movie, too. There in Dubuque. That was and then, then Dyersville. There was a... Dyersville, technically. Well, but but all uh, many of those know, Boston yes. scenes are were shot in Dubuque. As yes. a former yes. Dubuque tour guide, I can tell you several of those places. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That they use. Oh yeah, uh, they're all over the place. And then also, Dubuque was used place. to shoot, uh, take this job and shove it. And shove it. Yep. The old, the old vehicle that was... for that uh, Johnny Paycheck song. That was yeah. reworked. David in Alan Office Co. Space. made that one famous there. Did he? Okay. All right. Yep. For that movie. Yeah. Oh really? Was but, it? Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. I oh love yes, it. Dubuque's cinematic claim to fame. So. Yes. But Interesting again, thing nothing, about... nothing that makes us San Francisco. So nothing no, that's no. San Francisco about it. Another bit of but. trivia: the movie, the, the the reason that Dubuque was picked for the movie Fist, F I S T, the Stallone vehicle, yes. was because Dubuque everyone knows that movie, Corey. Dubuque was an early adopter of C A T V, which was the the predecessor to modern cable TV. Um, okay. And it was because of Dubuque's topography being as it's in uh, on the river level behind a big bluff that rabbit ear antennas don't work very well in Dubuque. Okay. Uh, you know, if you've ever tried to hook up, yeah, you know, with TV, my television, you can't pick up very much. I but Dubuque was an early adopter the of the community antenna TV, where they put a big TV receptor up on the hill, and then that signal would just get pumped into cable to houses. So they mm-hmm. wanted this fist movie to take place in like the 1920s or something, and they didn't want their establishing shots over the city to show TV antennas on top of all the buildings. Interesting. So in Dubuque, because they we had CA TV, there weren't TV antennas on top of all the houses because people were using CA TV. So on your old TVs, wow. when it says uh, where the coax cable goes in and it doesn't say cable, it says CA TV, that means that it was made during that time before cable became a big thing mm-hmm. and it was just a community antenna. And then Ted Turner was like, hey, wh- what if I beam signals to these community antennas? <laughs> and uh, And modern cable was born. Awesome. And no one has those televisions anymore. I do. Back in storage. Well, <laughs> you've been away for a while, so I've been I've been away for a long time. Yeah, I've yeah. been away yeah. since 1989. Yep. <laughs> they went door to door and gave everyone new televisions. So. <laughs> yeah, it was like Frampton Comes Alive. Yeah, exactly. Or Fleetwood Mac rumors. <laughs> oh God, I wish. All I have yeah. is this stupid Frampton double double disc. Ah uh, well. All right. And well, an exciting thing uh, happened yesterday, at least in my world, but uh, pitchers and catchers reported for some teams with baseball, and uh, that's always a sign of spring coming, and it was actually a nice sunny day here, so that was uh, extra spring-like as well, but um, pitchers and catchers reporting, uh, I found a, an interesting article, they tried to find the root of um, why pitchers and catchers report before everybody else, before the rest of the team does, and they interviewed some uh, major league pl- uh, pitchers and stuff that gave... Um, Reasons as to why, you know, to get the arm loose, to start uh, getting used to game-like action and everything. But actually, uh, the reliever for uh, the Oakland Athletics, Sean Doolittle, as he was giving his explanation, uh, disagreed with himself, we'll say. And he was like, well, I, I, I think maybe actually everyone should be here. And uh, they should be working on defense and batting and everything like that. So it, the article kind of went through and... It didn't say it didn't really come to a conclusion as to why pitchers and catchers report uh, before anybody else, but it uh, was funny because it went back to like the 1920s and um, when the newspaper would say it springs around the corner, pitchers and catchers are starting to report for uh, baseball teams, and it just I guess it's more like one of those things that people just get excited because it's it reminds them of spring and in the mm-hmm. the hard winter months and everything like that, it can be nice just to hear the words pitchers and catchers reporting. So uh, that's right. I believe you found some uh, fun comments and stuff on, well, on, on, on the internet? On, on Reddit, yes. On the, the MLB <laughs> Oh, the subreddit. different internet. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that part of the internet, yeah, yeah. Reddit is, is, is its deep. own thing, but yeah, on on the MLB discussion pages, there's there's lots of things that would be of much more interest to someone like Bob than to say myself because it's it's all off season speculation and people asking very specific questions about which team's double A starting roster should I be watching this this season? Um, oh, Chattanooga. Chattanooga, for sure. Okay, so Absolutely. you're all over it. But but anyway, someone <laughs> asked, amid all of this like deep inside baseball talk, someone said very innocently, hey, serious question here, guys. What does pitchers and catchers reporting mean? And yeah. uh, very simply, Ray Wencube says, it means all is soon to be right with the world, smiley face. Yes, uh, And then exactly. the rest of them were not appropriate for a non-explicit tag podcast like this. <laughs> I'll leave it to your imagination to uh, – Fill in those gaps yourself about pitchers and catchers, but so, but it was interesting because someone said like, yeah, reporting means they show up, not reporting yeah. means they're not like giving reports of something. So I was like, oh, I guess that's interesting that someone could misinterpret pitchers who and catchers is, reporting. Who is on Reddit's MLB thread <laughs> and thinks that pitchers and catchers are handing like TPS reports to somebody? They, Reddit's a great place for that, though. Reddit's I guess, a, it's, maybe. It's a, you can go to get your questions answered and get mercilessly trolled all in the same page. All in the same the place. Same page. It's great. The convenience <laughs> of the internet, for sure. That's right. I mean, it's really, it's it's a it's a perfect place for that kind of thing. So th- there is right. plenty of discussion there about pitchers and catchers reporting. And it is yeah. a sign of spring for me, too, as a casual baseball fan. It's like the Robins are coming back. Yeah. Days are getting longer. Pitchers and catchers are reporting. Well, and the other thing that that article brought up, which uh, I believe was on Sporting News, so if everyone gets a chance, go out and check it out. But it made an interesting point about how uh, baseball, whereas it's often nine guys versus nine guys on another team, um, a lot of the times it's two guys, the pitcher and catcher, versus one hitter. So although you have the whole team dynamic that's going on, you also can break it down and you have these uh, you know, two-on-one type of uh, – interactions and stuff that uh, can really determine how a game actually goes. So in order to get uh, the pitchers and catchers on the same page to get them in there early and just start working together, I don't know why you wouldn't bring everybody else in, why they couldn't do the same thing. But yeah. <laughs> um, it was just one of the interesting points that I brought up because that's I think that's one of the best things about baseball is that, you know, people it's slow for sure. It's a it's a patient game, but it's all the little nuances of the game that make it so fun to watch and uh, so fun to pay attention to, basically. I'm I'm yep. very excited for spring training to happen. I think it's a uh, if if you've ever been to a spring training game, it's really fun because it's a completely different environment than a um, a regular baseball game. You get a lot uh, the players are loose, they're walking around, you can you know run into them and everything, and you get to see a lot of uh, you know guys that are fighting for positions and stuff and fighting for roster spots, or uh, fighting to keep their career going and everything. So you get just some really fun storylines that start to happen in exhibition games where you don't get that in like preseason NFL or preseason basketball or anything like that. Yep. I used to specifically look for preseason games, spring training games that were going to be broadcast on the radio. I would specifically check the schedule because they don't do all of them. They, they do select it, but then as you Mm -hmm. get close to the season, they do more and more and more. Exactly. But then, but you would listen to, it was interesting to listen to like the split squad games. So yeah. those games, you you heard names that you would never ever hear again. They're playing on but, the Hartford Yard Goats. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, they just they they end up deep in in the minors, but you yeah. have these 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 names that you never hear, and some, but you know, some you might the random guy, you get that random call up. Maybe he has a good season in the in the minors, and you know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I heard that name way back on the split squad game. Yeah, you way, know, so way back. Yeah. And then it's, that's when you can always ruin your fantasy team, too, too. If you've watched too much uh, spring training baseball and you get really high on a guy and you're like, oh, this guy's going to just have a monster year. And then you realize they've been playing double uh, A, triple A pitchers and uh, players and stuff for most of spring training. So eight major yeah. leagues a lot different than the double or triple A. So. Yes. It's, well, uh, in, in a bit, I, I can assure you, Bob, I promise you that I will not ruin my fantasy draft by watching too much preseason baseball i can make <laughs> you that say that now solemn you s- vow to you right now well you say that now but it's pretty easy once you get once you get started it's pretty easy to ruin your fantasy team <laughs> no i know i well i understand yeah you can ruin it yeah Speak- anytime and speaking of we still have uh, spots available in our sticky bleachers yahoo fantasy baseball league so we'll include the link at the bottom here if anyone wants to join and ruin their fantasy baseball team this year in another league so 
That's right. And there's there's lots of places you can find us and chat with us. You can find us on Twitter at Sticky Bleachers. Yes. You can find us on YouTube, where, again, we do our Sims every week. This week, it is Cavs visiting the Thunder. Next week, who knows? We'll be continuing that on through the season, hopefully getting to some baseball once the preseason games actually well, start. Maybe sneak a rugby game in there. <laughs> we'll see if we can get a rugby video game. I actually got a suggestion for a rugby video game from the PlayStation era from a friend here. But, really? Uh, unfortunately, it's a, it's a PAL game, only released in Europe. And I'll have to see if anything we can uh, we can do will run uh, European games. So gotcha. that's something to, to look well, into. We might have to throw a challenge out to our, our listeners, see if they can... Dig yeah. up a ROM or something. Who has who has any any Sega over here? It's called Mega Drive. It was not called the Sega Genesis over here. Who oh, has really? a Sega Mega, Mega Drive. Drive era? Um, rugby, I wonder what the rugby. rationale behind that was. Like why Sega Genesis wouldn't sell the same? I am because it's sure. Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo's well, I think, Nintendo. I think it was called Mega Drive still in Japan. So when when oh, okay. it was developed, it was Mega Drive in Japan. And and I think oh I'm I'm gonna say something wrong here, but I think it came to Europe before it came to America. Okay. Um, and because because Europe got video games differently than than North America did, so um, there was a it's lot like of the them plugins. That, well, well, I mean, obviously not. Yeah, yes, <laughs> the electronics were different here. Yes, and also the the PAL PAL it ran on a different frame rate than American North American and Japanese TVs. They ran on the NTSC broadcast standard. In Europe, they used the PAL broadcast standard. So the games actually ran at a different speed. So, Corey, with the wealth of broadcast knowledge over there. Yeah, yeah. So if you, so if you, if you can get a, say, like an N64 console, I think N64 is one that you can mod an American one to play a European one. But if you play an American game on a European TV, it runs really weird, or or vice versa. So it'll work. It's but, on the other side of the screen. No, it's not like <laughs> that. It's just the speed. It's the speed. It runs. It does. It doesn't run at the correct speed. So the the. The machine is running at a different refresh rate than the television, so it's uh, it looks very choppy and the speed is off. This is this getting way too technical here. For <laughs> we're we're out of our element, Donnie. We've got, we've got I think we've got to call this one. So again, you can find us uh, around the internet on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, here on iTunes, the Sticky Bleachers. We talked about this before. Clicks being currency. Give us those reviews. Give us those thumbs up. Get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to read more of your comments and your feedback out here on the podcast and in our simulations. Uh, just Absolutely. find us and say hi to us and be cool. Yep. We're nice. We don't bite. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for me. So I'm going to sign off. This is Corey from Sticky Bleachers. I'm Bobby. We'll see you guys next week. Play ball! Sticky. <laughs> <laughs>